Hello everyone and welcome to match day number three of the ESL Pro League Season 5 NA Division. My name's Karath and I'm joined by Brainstorm for today and we have some excellent matches coming up. We do and exciting that we have Winterfox on stream today along with a lot of other good teams but we get to cast an Australian New Zealand team which is always exciting for us. Well now primarily New Zealand after well we do have a guess surprising pickup or the lineup because it hasn't been officially revealed so hopefully finally it can be revealed and for our second matchup, I believe it's SK Gaming up against Complexity. Yeah, which is going to be very interesting indeed because SK, of course, that team who were, they were the world beaters last year. They've won both the majors. They've looked so dominant. And of course, they have made their own roster change recently. They've brought in uh, Phelps in place of FNX. So we'll have to see how that one affects them. But certainly an incredibly dominant team. We'll have to see if Complexity can stand up to them. Yeah, I mean, we saw FNX play yesterday. So let's see how Phelps does this time. Obviously, the two shuffling around. Let's see how Phelps incorporates himself in SK Gaming. But first, let's talk a little bit more about the CLG as well as Winterfox lineup. And let's take an overlook, I guess, at the entire schedule. On the mainstream, you have Misfits up against Team Liquid. Misfits coming off a 2-0 victory. Not the most comfortable victory against Rush, but they did the job, as well as Luminosity Gaming up against Renegade. Luminosity Gaming definitely want to take this one. Of course. I mean, Renegades are the other Australian team in this one. If you don't know who they are, of course, they're over in North America now. But Luminosity is the other Brazilian lineup, which I believe we have three in the North American region now. So it'll be interesting to see if they can take the fight to uh, Renegades. I mean, they pushed Immortals to the limit, so definitely possible to do. And obviously, on today's stream over here, we've got CLG versus Winter Fox. We'd like to see how the Winter Fox lineup does CLG at the same time, you know, had a couple of problems in the last couple of days, but we'll talk more about it later, and as well as later in the evening, we've got Complexity up against SK Gaming, which, you know, should be an absolute blockbuster as well. SK Gaming, always a delight to watch. Yeah, of course. I mean, SK, as we said, just one of those teams who are so, so strong. I mean, I don't think they're officially number one in the world anymore, but they'd have to be close. I think they're still in the top Look, three. They're top so. five. Or top, top five, five absolutely. Yeah. And they're always going to be competitive, even if it's not a map they're perhaps so good on. They've just got, they've got the skill, they've got the aim, they've got the players to just really be able to take the fight to any team they play on any map. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's bring it back towards, I guess, CLG and Winterfox. I mean, we're still obviously waiting to confirm the Winterfox lineup, though it's been highly touted, you know, who the replacement's going to be. Let's talk a little bit about CLG, you know. Well, before talking about CLG, I guess, let's talk about, do you think CLG can make it to the finals? I think CLG have a shot. I mean, every team here has a shot. That's the advantage of Pro League, and especially when we're so early on, because it depends on how you play over the whole league. So winning your early games is great. Losing them, not so great, but you've still got a whole season to make up for that. So I think every team has a shot here, because they're all here. They all deserve to be here. So we'll have to see who turns up in their matches. Yeah, obviously, every single team want to win their matches because they want to compete at the Dallas Finals. If you didn't catch the... The information below, just head over towards proleague.com slash Dallas. And I believe they're competing out for a $1 million prize pool for season number five. Absolutely huge. That's US dollars. So, you know, that's a lot of money for, I guess, us dollary dudes. That's even more. So... Yeah, that, a lot of a lot of stake on the line for a lot of these teams. Absolutely. That is a massive payday, and that's that's something they want to be involved in. And it's great to see this growth in Counter-Strike as a whole. We're moving towards a lot of million-dollar prize pools. I mean, the majors are million-dollar prize pools. We're having these tournaments hosted overseas. You look at ECS, we've got leagues, which is having everything, all with these massive prize pools. So I think this year, 2017, in Counter-Strike, is going to be more competitive than ever. Absolutely. Let's take a look towards the team lineups because we finally have them ready. And Winter Fox, they will be announcing their new player. And to nobody's surprise, or to everyone's surprise, I guess, it is Raz from, I guess, Old Parallax. We know him, obviously, from the Oceanic scene. Definitely towards the mid-half of 2016, had a dominating performance. Love to see how he slots in. Now, they don't have stats yet because they haven't played any matters as opposed to Counterlogic Gaming, who... I guess came off a very, very rough 1-1 against Selfless Gaming. Definitely not the... I mean, sure, they got the one victory, but they wanted they probably wanted the 2-0 up against Selfless Gaming. Yes, and if nothing else, they wanted to be more competitive. That second map which they lost was a 16-7 against them on Cobblestone. So even if you are going to lose, you'd think you want to be more competitive than a 16-7. You want to have at least double digits, maybe getting towards your 12 or 13 kind of mark. Absolutely, and I think looking towards the stats there, once again, only towards the beginning of the season so far, it's not indicative of main, multiple trends but sub rosa as i guess the primary firepower definitely needs to lift his game coming on towards the first map between these two teams because you know if he doesn't the rifle is on the side of winter fox you've got emag you've got zuzi Ofnu, as well as moku apoc who'll rip you to shreds if you're not in your a game they will you know apoc 
We'll lock down a line, and we've seen how sharp he can be with that M4. Absolutely. And I mean, in terms of that CLG lineup, it's worth pointing out that Kusta coming over to them from Old Liquid, and then well, Enemy, and then Liquid. Was it Orpa? He's now a rifler. But here we go. CLG versus Winner Fox. Map is going to be Cache. Pistol Round is already live. Looks like we've got CLG starting on the T side, and some fast mid control already being taken. Well, Apox just going to lock down that Z connector here. He gets the first headshot. Raz opening up onto a Kusta as well. Oh. Off move, though. Oh, that's an absolute dirty shot. But CSGO, now the. Man. Now the retake begins towards the B side. Ethan does well to dink a couple Ooh. of players out. Gets one, gets oh. the second one towards Emag as well. Suzy back towards CT. Does manage to get the kill. Apoc will be traded out by Cutlass. So now forcing it towards a one on one. Zuzi does have the kit, but no body armor. Should be able to take this B side quite easily with the two flashbangs. But Cutler wide peeking Ooh. is going to give himself away. Zuzi so low. Cutler one shot from taking out the clutch. And he should be able to take it because Zuzi is slowly pushing it. Zuzi, huge shot coming out. 1-0 towards Winterfox. Yeah, he's got that kit as well, so there's plenty of time dropping that defuse. That was a chaotic pistol around there. Fight's being taken. I mean, the majority of the early damage wasn't even done on either of the bomb sites. The bomb went down on E. There was kills happen uh, B. There was kills happening over towards the A side of the map and in mid, which is certainly not standard. But Winterfox with that one on, I believe it was a one on two, one by Zuzi there, will get themselves that first round. And they'll be able to get into a buy here. They're going to be going for two M4s, three UMPs. They've got the M4s if, you know, they need to isolate, uh, shut down the long range. But the UMP is going to be looking to mop up the kills, get themselves the cash, and uh, just clean up this CLG side who are only on pistols. Yeah, so you see Ethan and FNS. I'm not sure if FNS planted the bomb, but it would make sense if he planted the bomb and get the Tech 9 as well as the Smoke and Flashbang. This is try they, you know, they're going to try and get the bomb plant down once again. If they win the round, obviously it's a big bonus on Cache. If you're able to bust on towards the site and get close towards the core position, that Tech 9 can do, and P250s can do a ton of damage, but FNS is going to cop grenade for so much damage. Raz does well to dodge. Gets one, gets Whoa. two, gets three. Quick succession. Molotov goes out. Not really in his favor, but Emac will clean up. Does give a bit of assistance. Well, Cutler's last man left standing. APOC cleans up very promptly. Very quick 2-0 so far towards Winterfox after Zuzi's heroics. Good stuff coming out from Raz so far. Definitely making his mark. CLG though, this is the buy round. They're going to make things hopefully work out as Raz. He's going to pick up the AWP and we see him do some damage. Let's see what he can do against an, a top tier NA team. Absolutely. And it's worth noting as well that there was a lot of uh, SMG kills in that last round for Winterfox. So on Cache here, they're picking up lots of cash, raking it in with those SMGs. But as you said, we're going to have the buy round here. Raz with that AWP, I believe, going to be playing over towards the A side with Emag to back him up. Actually getting pop flashed into our main to go for the early peak there. Going to be no one there from CLG though. They're just waiting around under the boost. The bomb is over towards B. Two players. Is there three under boost looking to take some mid control. I can only assume this is going to be a mid through vents to B split. They're going to try and get on to B that way. But Zuzi here at the top of highway is going to try and hold this one off. The timing could not work out in his favor, actually. He has just moved back towards the A side, and it's quite a passive hold out of Winterfox. They're just staying on their bomb sites for the moment. Yeah, this is a smart play because they have the three rifles. Normally, you see if Winterfox had a couple more UMPs, but they lost a couple more players, you'd see the aggressive play coming out of the SMGs. But because they were able to take all the guns forward. They have to play passive. They know they've got the utility to make it work. And off new. Oh, won't be able to get a flash out. Apoc now dancing around the site. Ethan does well to hide away. We'll be able to get the kill at the end of the day after I believe it was some other member from CLG just spamming through the edge of the box, able to get a couple of tags down. So now three and five. Winterfox, they may just decide to save. Won't be able to get into the site quite easily. If they get maybe two picks going in their favor, but no, nope, they're just gonna back straight out. See if they can get a couple of exits and damage the economy. They realize that the game is up. What Zuzi did towards mid was the correct decision. He had to back off, and unfortunately, the B site, you've got to hold on. Absolutely. You have to get a couple more kills going in the favor, especially from that situation. You can't complain about mid, because if there are three T's towards mid, there is no way a CT, a solo CT, can hold it, barring some very sharp plays. Yeah, and it's worth noting this save setup set out of Winterfox. So they've got the two rifles, or the rifle and the SMG in there, and Raz with the AWP, going to be up towards the back of the site. From the looks of things, it looks like they're trying to have Raz take a shot with the AWP and then bait the T's into pushing them so they can steal those rifles away, which is a smart play, but there's going to be no nobody on the CLG side actually moving towards CT. But I like that out of Winterfox. Even when saving, even with disadvantage, they're still thinking, how can we at least swing something our way here? Yeah, and at the same time, CLG, this is what I like seeing, you know, disciplined play. They all spread out, you know, see if they can start saying anything, and they realize, you look, they could be towards Squeaky, they could be A, they could be CT, but let's not go there and risk our ACAS. Let's just save so we can build up our economy for future rounds, put the hurt back on towards Winterfox, you know, take this one, force Winterfox onto an eco. If we lose this one, we'll have enough money. A little bit of damage done towards APOC through the edge of the wall, but only down towards 87. Still relatively healthy, but Ethan, as soon as I say that though, Ethan through the smoke, takes down APOC before he can make his way underneath boost, and Raz is already quite damaged as well towards that checkers area. 
I think that sub Rosa doing some damage. Yeah, Raz went aggressive. There was actually double aggression from Winifox. So they had the AWP moving towards B, trying to get a pick and B main there. That was Raz. And then APOC moving out into mid by himself, trying to shut down the boost, maybe get someone if they came out mid. But unfortunately for him, I believe he just got spammed down through a smoke. Not much you can really do about that one, apart from just get caught by surprise. So... CLG going to have the man advantage here already. Looks like they're going to be moving over towards the A site, where Winner Fox are actually playing retake. They're off the side. I mean, they've got a player in under boost again. I believe that is Zuzi waiting there. But Emag all the way back in CT, only just moving back to truck. There's no one directly on the site to uh, actually contest this. And with these smokes down, CLG should just be able to get on here and get the bomb down before Winner Fox even have anything to say about it. But off news position here is going to be huge. He spotted out Sub Rosa. He can come in behind. The timing on that is going to be so crucial. Oh, Emag's taking a little bit of damage and FNS through the edge of the smoke. Emag, though, will still get that kill. Oh, Good trades so. coming out, though, coming out from CLG. Often at the same time, also does push through that flank position. His position is now revealed, but this forces it onto a two on three. All the members of CLG are on that bomb site, just playing safe right now. As often as going to be flashed out, Raz is just guessing there's going to be one quad. Not going for any cheeky bangs so far. Cutler's going to be inside that squeaky area, close towards fence. Can't particularly tell yet. No, it looks like he is towards squeaky. Going to be tagged down quite low. Offnu, great reactions, great predictions, oh. but Raz caught out in the open. One now HP. one and two. One HP hero. Can he do it? I don't really think he can. Ethan should be able to get this kill. It's well played from Ethan so far. Definitely lifting his game. And nice rounds out of CLG as well. Their, their T side so far has impressed me. They're playing it slow. They're playing it carefully. They're working as a team. And they're not, you know, they didn't get too aggressive off the early frags because you could have understand, you know, they get that first pick towards mid through the smoke. They could have just all five rush mids take control. Had there been another CT there, they would have been entirely caught out. They didn't go for that though. They had the pick and then knowing they had the advantage, they grouped up, they moved together and they went and took a bomb site. And I mean, obviously it helped them that Winch Fox were not on that site. They were playing retake. But there was just nothing for Winter Fox to really do in that one. And it looks like not much to do in this one either. Well, APOC does manage to pick up one player. And APOC pushing in. Kusta, though, decides, you know what? I'm not going to use the AWP. I'm just going to whip out the Tech 9. And he's going to gun down APOC and Zuzi. So they're going to fall together. Raz, unfortunately, two angles to look at the same time. Emag, that's a cheeky Ooh. line. That is such a dirty line coming from Emag. Nearly picks up Cutler as well. But at the end of the day, an AK-47 is just a little bit stronger than that USP. But still some good damage coming out from Winter Fox. But at the same time, you know, they've got to start figuring out what's going wrong for them. They need to start shutting down this CLG attack. Yeah, but that said, here comes the buy from them. They're going to have themselves four M4s and that AWP. All body armor, no head armor, which they don't need, as it's only AKs and AWPs for the Ts, which are all really one-shot headshots anyway. I mean, the AWP one shot anywhere to the body. But technicalities, don't need head armor, so... They're going to be able to save a little money that way. Maybe buy a few more grenades. But here comes his A pick again. It's actually going to work out. Emag going to find one now. Raz trying to contest here up against Ethan. But no kill for him just yet. Going to be falling back towards the side. He now knows there is at least one player near him. Unbeknownst to him, the bomb is there as well. But CLG, again, they've got two players towards each side. Actually looks like they're going to be backing out now with the bomb off that A site. So I, I like their play here. They're taking it slow. You know, there's been one pick on each team. It's back into a four on four. They can now group up. They've got a minute and 15 seconds-ish to play with. They can take their time, think about what it is maybe that they want to do and what they can do really with the rest of this round. And I like this structured approach. They're certainly not panicking. Yeah, this is good stuff coming out from CLG. You can see at the moment, you know, they're it's still four and four. I would say this would advantage the T side just a little bit more. You can see at the moment, Offnu, his position is so important with that single Molotov. If he loses B side, it's pretty much all over for Winter Fox. They have to rotate out. If Offnu can get two kills, at the very least, he needs to get two to hold this off. Apoc now coming over towards Heaven, floating across just to spot the cross and probably tell Offnu if he's coming onto the site. Offnu doesn't have to do anything, just probably has to watch towards Headshot as they are coming in right now. He's been spotted out though, and Apoc will pick up one. So at the very least, you know, getting some damage down and forcing us to an equal situation. Apoc, what timing, but can't find Sub Rosa. Now a two on two, bomb's been lost. 27 seconds left on the timer. I am not sure what Cutler's trying to do, but he has to make a very, very fast move. Going on the Lurk roll, surely, Surely Zuzi, Zuzi is knows. aware of this and can't oh, no, the timing! The timing! Raz though with the reactions able to get the seconds. trade. Ten seconds. And this is gonna be so intense because Sub Rosa will go for the plant behind default. Raz will switch out towards the M4. He's gonna reload it, realizing there's not much left. Sub Rosa, all he needs to get is a single headshot. He is watching that heaven line right now. We'll jump <gasps> up. Spot. Ooh. Raz out, but misses the shot now coming across. Just spawning the wide line. Raz is just waiting for Sub Rosa to jump at him. Oh, he moves away just at the wrong Timing. time. And Sub Rosa, what a flick coming out from Raz. Beautiful plays from Raz Mick. Will get the one-on-one. And Winter Fox at least getting one back. But that was well played by CLG. That went down to the wire. 
Cutlock, what beautiful timing, just couldn't get the second one. That was some beautiful play coming out of Razmik once again. Absolutely. I think that's actually one on two there for Raz as well. So yes. well played from him. Going to be dropping his teammates. So they'll be able to get some buys up again. The money not great yet on Winter Fox, but they've got a chance to get back into this game now. Although, interestingly, Zuzi has gone straight for the MP9. I'm not sure if that's all he could afford. I mean, it, would, it is all he can afford, but I'm not sure if he thinks it's going to be an eco here or if he's just going for it and trusting it to beat rifles. But... All of these T's are going to have head armor. They're going to have, you know, AKs and an AWP as well. His only chance of a free kill really is going to be if he can take down Kusta and if Kusta misses in close range, but not going to be happening just yet. Although, look at the change up from Winter Fox. They've got a lot of players towards mid now. Again, playing retake on A, but starting out heavy with the mid presence because they don't want to give up this part of the map easily. You know, this isn't too bad because at the moment, even though that... Even though they're contesting mid, you know, they're not expending all their, I guess, utility there. You just have Zuzi, you know, just making a little bit of noise. Even if he dies, it's an MP9. It's not the biggest loss, you know? He sort of sussed out some information. Unfortunately, the trades don't go in the favor of Winter Fox. That is well played by CLG. Once again, Cutler just doing this damage, able to trade efficiently. I love this play coming out of CLG. This is some top-notch Counter-Strike we're seeing at the moment. Even through early days, both teams bringing their A game. And Emag, not sure if he spotted out Cutler's head. It will be flashed Boy, out, so... Emag won't be able to be pushed down, so often a lot of work to do. Has to go for this push timing, won't be able to find anything, and now the pressure is seriously on him. There's a lot of players coming his way right now. He's got to do something here. He has to get at least one, preferably two, before he goes down. Next. Even for his teammates, but a nice shot coming out from Ethan. We'll drop him before he can get anything done. That's CLG in control of the B site. Emag up here in heaven, looking to take down these players as they cross, but they're already through and under him, going around through a headshot. That's smart out of CLG. Being aware that angle through to the front of side is a possibility. They're going to avoid it completely, go through under headshot, Shot dodge under the crosshair, under the rifle of Emag, and that's going to be Winter Fox falling out here. They do get one round on the board, but instantly taken away from them. And now Raz with the AWP, Emag with the M4, looking to save their guns against the four remaining players of CLG. And I would say at this moment, the biggest problem for Winter Fox is holding this mid area. Cash is just a notoriously difficult map to hold on towards mid and CLG executing through that mid boost as well as coming out from Garage perfectly. Not really much you can do holding close. You can either get mollied off or you're going to get flashed out. And so far it's been shown, you know, two players, even one into vent is just not good enough. So Winter Fox need to figure out at this moment what to do. And CLG, you know, they just have to proceed as normal. They know that Winter Fox are going to try and make plays towards A and B, start to get control instead and just kind of leave that mid area a little bit more open. CLG is just going to try and collapse inwards. Absolutely. I mean, CLG really, they're just running uh, basically a default. You know, they run out, they look around, they try and get an early pick if they can. But what I really like is, yeah, they're spreading out for these early picks. And you know, last round, they got a kill and they lost a kill. It was back in four and four. But what I'm really liking here out of CLG is not just the patience, but I suppose the mental strength they have right now. It's a nice shot, Coos, to taking down Raz. The mental strength that CLG have, that when they do get a pick or lose one, they don't freak out and try and push and capitalize on it immediately. They still play normally because getting that first pick means the CTs are stuck in a 2-2 two, two, two setup for each side. And they've already got themselves the first pick here with that very fast peak out of Kusta, taking down Raz, who was trying to reposition there on the ramp of Z, gets caught out. And now it's a two, well, it's a four on five here, but only two players on each side. And... It's CLG to move towards his A site. Make that one player as Kusta finds his second kill of the round. Emag up high on the crate, counting on this off angle, finds himself the first kill. More players coming at him. FNS will take him down, which means again a two on four. Make that a two on three as Zuzi does manage to get a kill and an AK-47 for himself. This is doable here for Winter Fox. There's two players so low care of the dinks from those M4s, but a lot of work to be done for Ofno and Zuzi here. I don't think that FNS is in a beautiful position right now. That's not a common line a CT will check. They won't suspect that someone actually jumped up towards Catwalk. So we'll be able to jump up on towards Zuzi. So this all up to APOC. We'll get one. Kusta is very low. If Ofnu can do a little bit more damage, he doesn't really have a kit to go for this, though. And he doesn't know that two of them are towards that quad area. So sneaking very close. We'll be able to get the AWPA. Doesn't know there's one more towards quad. And he should be taken down from behind. There we go. Cutler taking all the time in the world. He had all the time in the world there. Just peek out. You know, where's Ofnu going? Oh, he's looking the wrong way. Sweet. Let me just shoot him in the back and save the AWPA for my buddy. So Kusta's going to be able to get that AWP up again. And... That was closer out of Winter Fox. They had a chance there, but unfortunately, the, the two-player two stack at quad from CLG was actually very smart indeed. And uh, they're going to get away with another round. And as we can see there, since the start, Winter Fox have only won one round and have immediately lost two after. So that's the reset on their economy. There's not much for them to do. As, as I say that, just pistols in this round. A P250 on Zuzi, but nothing else for his teammates. Kusta, surely going to get a free kill here. Not falling for the shoulder peak. Hits the second one. APOC gone. And now a 5 on 4 again for CLG. They're so good at getting this quick pick so far this map. Raz falling down. Wasn't spotted out by Sub Rosa. Raz thinking about pushing in. 
As you said, though, it is a pistol eco, so not really much that Winter Fox can do. Raz should collapse down here. Would have liked to see CLG pick up and maybe a couple more SMGs, because they should have read the situation that Winter Fox was going to be on an eco this one. Should have picked up, you know, maybe a MAC-10 or one of their dead players, try to get some more money through. But otherwise, you know, as long as you take all the AKs for the next round, which they should be able to, it should be fine. Their economy is looking great right now. Absolutely. I think it's also a sign of the fact that CLG are taking this map very, very seriously. They don't want to have, you know, these rounds where they have SMGs and they get dropped very easily. They want to have all of the power of these AK-47s in their hands. And yes, admittedly, maybe it is a misread. Oh, there's a kill out of Zeusy. The, oh, <laughs> finds the dink on the second one, but no kill there. Cutler on 5 HP. Opnu with the world in his shoulders can maybe get a kill towards Squeaky. That is where Cutler's going to be with that incredibly low HP. But that's going to be all he's going to be able to find here. There is spam coming through all around him. He's going to wind up looking towards Ethan at the right time, but he will get dropped. And uh, CLG, again, looking good here. As I was saying before, they're in the middle of that round. They're not using these SMGs perhaps just because they want to take this one seriously. They don't want to have any even slightly unfavorable engagements because with rifles against pistols, you're pretty much always going to have a big advantage. If you do have an SMG, you have to get in closer. Maybe you get double dinked by a P250 and you're dead. So... Not really, though, because in the rifles, if you exit, you have to still capture the site off the CT. So you got to enter it regardless. And really, the trick here is because you sack the SMG. You can be so mobile with SMG. You make it difficult for the pistol person to hit you. At the same time, you know, you can spray them down with bullets. They're not going to have armor. Rat's going to take a little bit more Molotov damage, and he probably should have. Reacting maybe just a little bit late there to see if he could find anything, but there was going to be no one peeking. I believe that Sub Rosa just playing that B lurker at the moment for the teasers. They're just spreading on the default, coming back towards mid once again. Going to seize control off it. And you can see Wintervox trying to adapt around it. Apox playing further back, as well as all the Ombers and all the other members playing more further back on the side to hold it as opposed to contesting CLG. With the exception of Apoch, who is in Z, but he's behind a smoke there now, so not going to be a free kill or indeed an easy peek for him either. He's actually jumping, trying to spot over this smoke, trying to see if he can spot these players' boost. I think he might have just missed the shoulder of Cutler there. It was just behind the building, I think, but... Now Cutler actually moving forward and gets tagged down very heavily. This grenade could do it. Not quite. Cutler on 12 HP does escape with his life, avoiding that grenade. And actually, advantage at least for now with Winterfox and Emag. Depending on how this smoke fades for him, could get this pick towards FNX. They're walking up... Uh, FNS. They're walking up highway here. He moves away at just the wrong moment. That smoke just unfavorable for him. But that flash going to hold CLG off for now. And this, the timing around who gets this first kill here on the A side is going to be all important for this round. And at the moment, it's looking like CLG. They've got all the position. And look at FNS as well. He's through behind. But Emag actually checks it, gets the first kill. Now he's got more players coming at him from A main and from Squeaky. There's a couple kills going to the T's. Emag looking to do it all. Gets two, but will get traded out. It's now a two on three here. Better than it has been for Winterfox. But the last two players rotating through Z now have got a long way to go to get onto this bomb site. Yeah, it's just unfortunate. They couldn't read that the highway play was coming through. If Emag was able to jump even just a millisecond earlier, may have spotted out FNS crossing earlier. But as it is CLG, the patience play allows them to get rewarded because so far, you know, no information to granted towards them. Kusta! Wow! Alphanu is putting Tech so much man. pressure on it. Kusta also getting another AWP kill. Big stuff coming out. I'm pretty sure I saw earlier his Tech 9 is named Yes, You Died to This or something along those lines, which is appropriate in this case because, you know, if an AWP misses a shot at you and you rushed him, you don't expect to all be killed by a Tech-9, which admittedly not the situation we just had, but Kusta has been strong with that pistol so far. His AWPing's been pretty decent as well. You know, he had that one round a little further back where he hit the double entry for his team before the rest of the rifles even got involved. But so far, a really good start here for CLG on T-side case. They're up 7-3. to three. Yeah, and then out... They're now just driving the herd in towards Winter Fox. Even in that round, they still had got three guns going forward. I don't know how many rounds they've actually survived and just building up their economy. But, you know, it's just working out. Koos is just hitting these shots so far. I wouldn't say that's even Raz playing poorly. It's just Kusta is just wrecked. been wrecking them with the Tech 9 as well as the AWP. So now an XQ on towards the A site. Corner's been cleared. Zuzi doesn't actually get one trade, but Ethan gets a counter trade. So it's still, you know, federal for CLG. They lose one AK-47. That's the situation I'm talking about where if you lose an SMG... Sorry, APOC does get the kill, but sorry to interrupt you. But well, it's sense. it's in the sense that, you know, if it was a MAC-10 leading in that situation, you'd lose a MAC-10. You'd lose only about, or just do the quick maths, you'd lose about 2.5k investment if you get maybe a Molotov and a flashbang. Whereas if you buy an AK armor as a Molotov, that's actually a 4k investment, 1500 difference, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it compounds up over time, you know. Yeah. Say, for example, if FNS went SMG twice, he'd actually have 5k by now as opposed towards 1600. 
And he could even have more than that, depending on how many kills he actually gets with that thing. His SMGs do give the bigger kill reward. I believe it's double of what rifles do. So, lesser investment, higher kill reward, the lower payoff of that being, or the payoff of that being, I guess, that you have less damage, and you've got to be a bit closer than the rifle's counterpart, but definitely something that can work. But for now, CLG have already won the majority of the rounds in this half. They've got themselves that eighth round, that all-important eighth round, which means, hey, no matter what happens, you've won this half. Winner Fox only on three. I mean, best case scenario now for, uh, for them is to win this round, win the next one. I mean, they have to win the rest, but really, they've got to win the next maybe two or three rounds before they get CLG on an eco. And by the time that happens, you know, the half will be over. So it, even if they win this round, they're pretty much facing down basically full buys from CLG for the rest of the half. Yeah, they just managed to cross on towards the side as well. They just sneaked out through Squeaky and gambled correctly that no one's going to be there. And Kusta may be able to find Afox. Does spot him out. So Afox, his position's now known. And Winter Fox... There's no way for them to go. They need to back out, in my opinion. They just need to go as soon as possible. They're this, you know, desperation tactics. Oh, Raz will be get one off Nu gets traded out. Apoc just shut down from behind a Raz. Pistol battle. You can't find four people with that USP. And he's just gonna they're just gonna be forcing another eco. They look, they can buy armor and pistol in this one. I don't recommend them forcing up. They've already lost a half. There's no point going for desperation tactics right now because it's not working. They are going for it. And I don't think it's going to go well for them. Because they're just going to be hammered every single round for the remainder of this. Barring a severe misplay from CLG. And so far, there's only been a couple of misplays. Where, you know, Sub Rose is looking the wrong way. You know, instead of looking towards a B side and being aware of that flank potential. But they're minor misplays. They're not major misplays in the sense that, you know, we left the bomb behind. We didn't watch it. So far, you know, it's just been clean play out of CLG. It has. And uh, that's the thing as well. If... Winterfox can't win a round on a full buy. I'm not sure how they're going to go with, as you said, this force buy. But maybe this is the round that changes it. But if not, I mean, Winterfox could very realistically be staring down a 3-12 half here. Absolutely. CLG so far has just shown absolute domination so far. They just look like they're uh, checking all the lines. And Kusta is lifting his game so much. So is Ethan. Only, you know, only person that so far I'd comment on not really pulling their weight, maybe sub Rose a little bit, but once again, he's playing that B Lurker role, not really expected to shine on that B Lurker role. They haven't executed that much towards B side. Now they're executing towards the A side. I think they Let's they see, have a niggling that EMAG is up here, but no one's really checking it so far, and EMAG's doing well to dodge the flashes. <gasps> Ethan first out, but EMAG and Raz will be able to get a couple of kills. Raz gets a second kill. Zuzi's on the side as well. They've been able to read this perfectly, able to hold it off so far. Now a two on four. Seal G now they're backs against the wall. Cutlot, though, through the edge of the smoke fire. One. A lot of time for CLG to still work with. They're just going to bide their time. Bomb is down, though. They've got to go and get that thing. And there's Zuzi with another kill. And now Kusta in the one on three. Just misses that shot over towards Truckers. Players picking him everywhere. And a nice shot out of Zuzi running out with that FAMAS. Started stepping perfectly and killing Kusta. So maybe we're not out of this one yet here for Winterfox. They do win themselves at least one round there. But that's going to be their round loss bonus reset here as well. If they lose this round, they'll most likely be losing the next round of the half. I mean... Again, even if they do get this, I mean, this, if this round they win it, they get a 9-6 potentially, which would be great for them, or even a 10-5. If they lose this, I think they're going to be facing down 11-4. Well, I mean, we do have a tactical pause coming out from CLG. It's quite an early attack pause. Not sure what's going on. Maybe they just want to they just want to finish off. I believe they do get one tactical pause each half, so they might as well just, you know, go straight forward, you know? Just might as well take a talk. Okay, what did we do wrong with the A side? I actually like seeing this, you know. Don't let Winter Fox get fired up. Just shut them down and just go, all right, Winter Fox 1-1. One, one. Let's just everyone calm down. Maybe, you know, maybe people are getting fired up. The communication was going right. Let's just everyone calm down. Let's see. You know, we're still winning 9-4. We've won the T half. Let's drive the stake in a little bit more. Make it 11-4 half and just completely shut these guys out in our CT half. You know, quick 16-4 victory. That's what they're going to be aiming for. Absolutely. And I mean, that was still a good take from them. I mean, for that A site, we saw they had all of the utility. It was all going well. They did check that boost position. They didn't get the kill, but they were checking it. They were aware. So for CLG, really, maybe it's just a case of we've got to be a bit more careful when we check that. For now, with that, that uh, tactical pause from CLG has come on, and we'll have to see what they decide to do with it here. They're actually going to boost Imagine up again. Now, they did this last round. We'll have to see if CLG are going to be aware of it. Raz did go for the quick pick and AMA in there. He's been doing that pretty consistently, pop flashing himself in. Hasn't really landed it a lot of times yet. I think he did it once with Emag, and the rifle got the kill. So, not been the greatest of effect, but for now, at least they do know that A main is empty. They've shut at least that much down. So, that's, that's decent information for Winter Fox. But if you look at where they're playing, I mean, they've given up mid at this point. Zuzi playing back inside Z is going to peek it now, but there's going to be grenades coming his way. There's the flashes and smoke server. He knows they could be in mid, but he doesn't know that they are. And I really like this out of CLG with the way they're playing their map control. They're denying a lot of information for Echo Fox, uh, Winter Fox, sorry. That's a different team. 
And now CLG going to be coming in towards this B site here where there's only two players as I don't think Zuzi will be able to rotate in time unless he moves now. Yeah, Zuzi's just going to be trying to hold maybe, maybe towards tree, maybe towards heaven. But so far, look at this. Once again, you were mentioned correctly. CLG, so much map control, but... I guess, you know, FNS just walks in the crosshairs of Raz and he's just going to deny them a little bit more territory control. So they have to go for the B site. 35 seconds left. They're slowly creeping up. There's the Ooh. first kill. This is much better play on the B site. Zeus is going to peek out, find Good. one. And there's a lot of tag damage done towards Sub Rosa. Sub Rosa will get the kill at the end of the day, but this should be another wrap up for Winter Fox. Barring, I guess, Kusta yeah. coming in and having a say about this. Often with the, with the UMP there gets the go. double kill. Actually picking up the double lob going into the final round. So CLG should be able to buy up into the final one. Once again, winning a lot of rounds. But Winter Fox, the late resurgence means that at least they have a fighting chance going onto their own t -huh. Still going to be hard work for them, though. Yeah, but that said, they're only down... I mean, they're down four rounds now. If they win this one, it can be 9-6. The advantage of a 9-6 half is when you switch, if you win that pistol round, provided the anti-ecos go your way, you're back tied up at 9-9 straight away. So... That's what Winter Fox are going to be playing for here. They're going to be playing to win this round, and then the pistol, if they get that, it's a tight game. And that's a good start, actually. Zuzi has already found two. I believe they were in mid. Yeah, he's going to be playing towards Z there and Kusta. This is a really sneaky angle here under the roof. That's going to be a very difficult shot to hit if you're a rifler. But smartly, Zuzi's not going to be peeking it for now, just holding mid and waiting for it. There's a nice shot out of Sub Rosa taking down Raz. Now, given that he was spotted under the boost, you'll have to wonder if they're going to suspect E Mag. He has been up there a few rounds in a row now. They've only seen him there once, I believe. But. Surely you think CLG are going to suspect, and we're on a four on three. Advantage Winter Fox, a minute, ten seconds on the clock. See, uh, the T's do have mid, but not much else. Well, other than this, you know, they still have to figure out how to navigate the danger of Raz's orb so far, it looks like. Oh, sorry, not Raz's orb, but Apox orb, as a matter of fact. Raz was taking down early Kusa now, slowly coming on towards the A side. You do have Zuzi just floating towards that truck area, but Kusa may spot out the boost right now, but Emac, what reaction's coming out? That's expected of, I guess, one of the superstars. Whoa. Gets a second kill, does fall, but he's done his job. Two kills with the assistance of Raz earlier on. FNS will be able to get the cross on towards the side. Bomb plant might not be able to be retrieved as of yet. Looks like FNS now on a one and three. We'll be able to retrieve the bomb now. But Winter Fox just spotting towards a cross. APOC will miss that shot. So with 30 seconds left on the timer, the bomb plant will go down. 40 seconds left. FNS has to go for all these one-on-one -on -one deals. Spots out APOC. That's one down. Now it's up to Zuzi as well as Ofnu to work together. FNS going to go towards quad. This Molotov going towards the wrong area. It's not going to deny any play on towards the quad position. Only default's been cleared out for Winter Fox. And they don't know if he's behind a snuck towards forklift. Oh, and Quad, they go to clear this out, and Zuzi's coming here by himself. Ofnu's not there to make the trade. Ofnu's going to fall. FNS, he can make this happen, but Zuzi's close oh. range. We'll be able to get the spray down, and Winter Fox will be able to get that final round in the half. 6-9. We're going for a short break, but the action is going to stay intense. Stay tuned to see who's going to take the first map. Team Apparel now at shop.eslgaming.com. like nuke no well here's a common warehouse smoke for you anyway 
The lineups for this are nice and easy. It's fairly common Orpus should play from this spot, and this smoke should push them away and force them to relocate. Position yourself over this corner and aim slightly above the metal fixture, and then tosh the smoke. Easy, now you removed one of the 45 different angles that CTs can kill you from. Welcome back to the match between Winterfox and CLG, and what a high end towards Winterfox's, I guess, late resurgence. They're all down 9-3, and just were able to take the last three rounds to bring it back. You know, not the best situation to be in on the T side of Cache, but at the very least, it's serviceable. Absolutely, and I mean, if they win this pistol round, they can put themselves back up towards 9-9 with the help of those anti-ecos, so... Really, a much better half than it could have been. I mean, sure, you'd, they would have loved to get that 8-7 when they were down early on. They couldn't end up doing it. But 9-6, definitely not bad as this pistol round and following up anti ecos will even them up. But it will also put CLG even further ahead if they can't get it. So, well, if Winterfox can't get it. So it looks like they're going to be playing towards the B side here. They've got four players here. Going to be off new, lurking back out towards the garage, trying to catch out anyone who pushes. And doesn't look like anyone's going to be doing it for now out of CLG. If, if they play their CT side anything like they played their T, I'm expecting a lot of patience out of them. No sort of rush decisions. But speaking of rushes, here comes Winterfox in towards his B side. That's a nice thing. Got a Cutler as well, but he's still going to find a kill. So will FNS. Kooster getting another one there. Zuzi does manage to at least take down Kooster, but it's a two on four already. Zuzi and Ofnu with it all to do. Zuzi at least going to manage to upgrade his pistol, but there's players coming from, well, all around them, really. The bomb's stuck out towards the site. They've got to go and get that thing. They've still got Cutler very low on the site, and now Sub Rosa catches a dink of his own, but it's all on Zuzi. Does find one kill. If he can take down FNS, that's the other high HP player here. The other two are so low. This is possible here for Zuzi, but he's got to find these kills now. 20 seconds on the clock, just gone by. He's moving in. Will catch out Sub Rosa, surely? No! Doesn't do it. Cannot find the kill, and unfortunately... The hopes of a tie, at least, of that round for Winterfox are now dead. Yeah, and because of the way that I believe this match works, you actually don't see the damage. You can't see how much damage you've done after you die. So, if anyone's wondering why, you know, the call wasn't made, they're low on the B side, you actually don't know how much they're actually low. You don't know if those players are on 100 or 5 HP. So, Absolutely. that's why he had to go, that's why he had to go for the hit, and unfortunately, it just didn't work out in that sense. If you're wondering why he didn't go for the body shot, he doesn't know what we know. So, CLG now in double digits. A lot of rifles, a lot of respect shown towards Winterfox, knowing that Winterfox will force up into this round. Absolutely. They're just like, all right, we're going to play the long range. We're going to have the superior damage. And, I mean, Winterfox here making the right call. I mean, trying to go towards a sub Rosa does take him down. He's the only player here for the CLG side, but he's got himself an M4. He has the long range advantage. It's going to be a UMP for uh, Zuzi, who can try and do something with this. Bomb going down. That's good for Winterfox. They can try and stall this one now. Every second they waste here burns a bit more time off that clock. But there is a kit on the CLG side. They've got to move in towards this site now. All going to move together. They do have the superior weaponry. This one not going to be an easy hold off here for CLG. And it's all going to rest on what uh, what this UMP of Zuzi can get done here at Forklift. Got players pushing in close to him. Fully blinded by his own flashbang. Everyone blind there. But FNS will get the kill. Now APOC playing inside the site with the Deagle. He's the last player remaining. So much damage coming his way. Trying to get these shots down. Or at least delay will be taken down eventually. There was an attempt for a knife there, actually. I believe that was from Cutler, but no extra money for him, but a defuse for his team, which is arguably more important. They'll keep those, uh, both those M4s alive into this next round. And Winner Fox, having bought in that one, did get the bomb down, did get that bit of extra money. They could potentially buy in the next round, but not going to be able to do it in this one. Yeah, I mean, if they force up in this one, they didn't do enough damage to justify forcing into this one. If they took a couple more rifles out, you know, maybe force it towards maybe one person alive, the call might have been made. Winter Fox, all right, let's go. We can... Even though we can't afford the superior weaponry, we know CLG are going to be buying in the SMGs. Get a couple of Galils, you know, not the best rifles. They're still service, maybe get a couple of UMPs, and we can definitely overwhelm the CTs and then force them into a bit of a pickle. As it is though now, it's just going to be a bunch of pistols. CLG needs to be cautious on not losing many weapons. They need to go into the next one. You can see Kusu with just a 5.7. He wants the orb. Similarly, Winter Fox, they will have enough cash to go into the next one with a lot to work with. They have got that bomb plant down, as you mentioned earlier, and they should be able to, you know, buy that AWP on Raz, see where he takes that. A lot of utility as well, so it should be a good one. As Zuzi actually managed to find a pick on towards Kusta, who, pushing with the 5-7, does get caught out. Yeah, and, um, I mean, he will actually hand that pistol over now as well, so Zuzi's going to get an upgrade for free, but the CT side, uh, the B side, going to be the push here. CT's going to be holding this one. FNS going to find the first kill, and unfortunately for Winterfox, there is a pair of M4s here. Had they gone towards A, it might have been an M4 and a UMP to face off with, but on B... 
they're going to have two M4s, and Zuzi here is going to be running straight into the UMP of Ethan, who will take him out. And now it's the M4s on the B side looking to finish up. Cutler gets one, Cutler gets two, and now only APOC remaining. As I say, that goes down. Cutler with the 3k in the end to close it out. Quick work with the M4A4 there, and 12 to 6. CLG now doubling Winterfox's score. Yeah, this is the part. Okay, it looks like Kusta actually didn't have that much cash to actually buy an AWP, so. There's not going to be an AWP. is just given a UMP instead. Cutler has the money for it, but decides not to drop it. At the same time, Winter Fox will have the AWP and Raz. No utility on him. The rest of the members, though, full set. No HE grenades. Eight flashbangs. Four smokes and four Molotovs to see if they can get the way on towards a bomb site. So it looks definitely like an execute. Very strange to see no HE grenades. You'd like to, you know, at least tag, you know, soften up your opponent a little bit. But they're just going to go for the straight aim duels. I mean, obviously trying to blind their opponents, but then going for the aim deals. Yes, and I'm not sure. I mean, Winter Fox, sure, go for it. It hasn't worked out so well for them already in this match. They have been losing a fair few aim duels. They looked better in the, I suppose, latter half of last half, or the latter quarter, I suppose. But they were still down a lot of rounds by that point here. And there was a lot of nades on the CLG as well. This position from Ethan. He could stop this whole thing right now, depending on the timing. If Raz peaks first and can't hit this shot, Ethan will be there. The timing on this is going to be so close. The Molotov out. Ethan knows. He must know they're there now. Spots it. Actually going to go for the push, and Raz was ready for it. We'll get him, and Apox going to follow up onto Kooster as well. Unfortunately, there was just Ethan moved a fraction too early there, and a nice shot out of Zuzi will take out FNS. And that boost play was all important there for both teams. It would have decided at least the first half of this round, and now it looks like it's decided the whole round with Cutler and Sub Rosa left alive to try and fend off against five Winterfox players. Yeah, and at the moment, Winterfox playing it successfully. They, you know, they don't need to rush anywhere. Just see the suss out where the CT players are and then overwhelm me. You see Sub Rosa, you know, he's just trapped, like, right now, like a rat. So he has to just run out as fast as possible. He does manage to get out of the rat cage. All he needs to do now is ball off the side, you know, get a couple of kills, maybe slow this bomb plant, just do some damage. But there's one pushing him. He does realize a great reaction coming out from Sub Rosa to get the headshot towards APOC. But the save will go through. Cutler and Sub Rosa will take the M4 to the next round. But great mid play coming out for Winterfox. And just, you know, paying back CLG just a little bit of the pain they felt on their own safety side. Absolutely. And having a look at their economy here, it's really not great for them. I mean, they have two players who have a lot of money, and it's conveniently the two players who are alive. So they'll be able to drop some rifles over there. They can drop the M4s they have, they can buy some more, and then maybe someone else can buy for Kusta, who is only down on $900 before the round loss bonus comes through for uh, this one. But... They're not going to get a whole lot of money for losing this one. I believe it's $1,400 for losing a round after you've won all the previous ones. So they're not going to get a lot of money. They should be able to get a serviceable buy together with the M4s that can be dropped off of Cutler and Sub Rosa. But I don't think they'll have a lot of utility to go behind it. So I have a decent amount. I think Ethan, or I think it'll be, I'm not sure if it was Ethan, but one of the members will have at least 2300 So he can get a bit of utility. It's actually off to go. go for the head armor. So... Look, he's missing maybe one grenade. M4s will go out, and because Cutler as well as Sub Rose were able to take a Molotov and a Flashbang, that's a lot of money taken through the next round. That was actually critical. They saved at least 5k worth of utility as well as weaponry. And you can see it at the moment. You know, that is a serviceable, a full fight buy you see out of CLG coming out. Winter Fox, they've done well. They've broken, uh, they've broken CLG once, they got to do it again. They do, and I mean, that save, as you said, was very important. That was potentially the difference between two rifles trying to make a heroic play with some pistols backing them up and this full buy, which we now have in front of us. So excellent work out of CLG there, but some early kills going the way of Winterfox. Two for one trade there, which means we're now in a four on three. The AWP on Koos is still up. He's been very sharp with that, but he is the only player towards this B side. He's got to hold off all of Winterfox, or at least three of the four players of Winterfox who are here by himself until his teammates can get over and help him out. So Koos to here could have a lot of work to do for now. No Winter Fox players actually pushing him. He does have a second here to think about this. But Emag already in the back of Checkers. Kusta may not know he's there. Now the first peak's going to come in. Spots that Molotov coming out. He now knows at least one player there. But Emag, very nice shot there. Taking down Kusta. The site opened up. And Sub Rosa and Ethan again left. Four on two this time for CLG. Still two players alive. They did manage to get a kill. Basically the same story as last round. But again, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a save out here again. And looking at their economy, they need to. Yeah, and at the same time, Winter Fox, you know, they just need to save. Just play discipline. They only lost APOC, you know, not the biggest loss. You know, you lose one member, save, go forward. You know that CLG have to either, with these two rifles, they're probably now going to buy pistols. You can probably read that situation. Winter Fox will play accordingly around that. You know, play a lot more safe. So far, mid's working. Winter Fox will just keep going mid. Now CLG has a problem. They had one towards mid initially on, you know. They have two, they had three. 
even three people didn't work. You had Eponis try and play a bit of a cheeky spot, wasn't able to really make things work out. You know, Cutler and Ethan got caught out in the open. A bit unfortunate, maybe, but able to do it. Zuzi actually going on the hunt. Won't be able to find anything, so... Cheeky Zuzi to try to walk in, but... Unfortunately, he's just by himself, so no trades going in the favor. I'd say CLG, you know, pick up a couple of pistols, potentially. Cutler has a bit of money, which means that the AWP will come out in the next buy round. But you can afford maybe a P250 or a 5.7. Put a rifle in each site and get a couple of pistols just sitting towards tight corners. And who knows, you can reap the dividends from that. Winterfox still has, has to take this very cautiously. But it's worth noting, Winterfox have won their last two rounds, both with, well, four players surviving for the first one, then almost four, but three with Zuzi dying on the hunt. But they're still keeping a lot of players and therefore a lot of guns alive, which means their economy can start to get established, they can start to make this comeback work. This is interesting though, towards the A site, I believe both M4s are actually going to be there, and they're going to be boosting one of them up high. So, I was about to say, I wonder if Winterfox will check that, because they did it a lot, but APOC, already ahead of me, does get the kill on the boosting sub Rosa. Ethan will trade him back out, but that is one of those M4s taken out of this round now. Winterfox only have one more big gun against them, and then just a couple pistols to clean up. So, this round should be going their way now, if they play it safe, if they play it properly, and they've got three players together over towards A. They've got a pinch on Ethan, he's got the gun, unless he takes down all three of them by himself. If they can drop him, they should be okay, as sure, the pistols are starting to rotate in, but I don't think there'll be too much damage done. Winterfox, though, looking like they're ready to push in here. Ofnu still just waiting in this squeaky door, waiting for his moment to strike. And actually, there's a peek from FNS as well. Spots him out in A-Main. So now the jig is up. Winterfox have been found out. They do still have 45 seconds. They can rotate sites if they want to. But Ethan getting boosted up on top of the back of Red, trying to see if he can spot out. This is actually a very nice headshot angle from him. He does have that M4, so not going to do full instant headshots. But he jumps up high, goes for the spray. But here comes Winterfox, entering with the rifles. Ethan will find one. He has to do more here. He has a gun. Kooster's actually found an AK of his own. But... Ethan down. Now it's a three on two. Cooster and, and Cutler with it all to do. But Cooster has an AK. And the smoke now coming across on towards the side. So Ryan's at the AWP is watching. Watching towards Squeaky, which was the correct line. But Cutler does manage to peek out. Won't be able to... No, will be able to find Emag at forklift. Cooster also makes his position. No, so Cutler. Oh, Ofnu is so low at the moment. And... Cutler just dancing around. Raz has switched out for the M4. Should be able to get this kill. Nope. Cutler just dancing around the door so far. Staying alive with just a P250 and off new. Changes out AK47. Playing with him. Yeah, he doesn't really want to reload, so they'll back out safely. Cutler trying to find any pick he can, but they're just going to back out of sight. Raz will be able to get out. Takes a little bit of damage. Cutler's going to die to the bomb now. Unfortunately, so won't be able to get the chase either. Raz might pick it. Nope. Doesn't pick it. Bomb does a job. Suddenly, a much tighter contest. Winterfox bringing it back after losing the pistol in the buy rounds. And this is something we saw, I guess, CLG on the T side doing towards Winterfox. And CLG, just, I think at the moment, this mid problem is not being solved by either team. This is what's been costing them so much. Absolutely. And Cache uh, is a map where mid is so important. Because it, you can get to both sites from mid. You can take them entirely from mid. But it also gives you such a powerful, uh, a powerful way to split. You can get through into CT spawn, try and flank them going through Z. You can go in through vent, split B. You can go, you know, up highway, get into A. It's such a powerful position. And for neither of these teams to really be exploiting it to full effect is definitely going to hurt them. But Winterfox here... Definitely in the driving seat. I mean, they are three rounds behind, but they've got themselves a full buy. Their economy is going to be set for them to buy again in the next round, and potentially even the one after that if they do lose it. So they're set for now. The other issue is, though, CLG are already at 12. And while Winter Fox are in a bit of a comeback here, they don't really have many rounds they can afford to lose. And especially as I think losing two, that'll shatter their economy. If they lose another one, they'll be facing down map point anyway. So every round, at least until they tie it up, is going to be very, very important here for Winter Fox. That's it, though. Winterfox have snuck in towards Checkers. And there is no one except Acoustia at Tree or at B-Side. So, CLG, they're they still stacking towards that mid area, but they don't gain anything out of it. There's no territory gain. There's no information gain. No boost being deployed. No pushes at A-Side. And this is the problem. They have no read on what Winterfox is doing at the moment. They have to wait for smokes. And the first thing they'll know is that the T's are already on the B-Side. Kusa has to nail so many people through the smoke. There's the first one. APOC just rushing once again, which is... A little bit not disciplined from it. We saw that oh, from the so previous close. round. Where APOC was pushing a highway. Sure, he got the kill on Sub Rosa. But he got punished for it because all of a sudden, Raz actually under a lot of pressure. Raz decides to pull out the P250 as oh. Cutler will be able to get that kill. This is going terribly wrong for Winterfox. Unable to get the flank kills. And as a result, they should be able to bust in through Tree as well as the rear. Two orbs out. This is not really the ideal retake, but sure, why not? Let's go for it. Yeah, they've got the player advantage, so as you said, why not? I mean, there's Sub Rosa finding the first kill on the entry onto Zussi. 
Off Nuke trying to get it done, but not going to be able to do so. And now Emac has it all to play from. I'm not even sure the bomb is planted for him. There's going to be a smoke on that as well. Defuse is already coming in. He must know it. He's just got to back away at this point. Try and keep that rifle alive, and he's not even peeking here. It's going to be a full 10-second defuse as well, as there was no kits on the CLG side, but that won't stop. And they will get it across the line anyway. And now Emac, having got himself the first kill, trying to stay alive. He will keep that AK up. The economy is set for Winter Fox. They can buy again here. But if they lose this one, I think they will just about be out of money. That was really... That problem with that B hold was really... Firstly, APOC, you know, crossing early. You have to wait for your smoke. Doesn't matter if you think, you know, you can outjump an AWPA. At this stage where Acoustra is playing, you need to give him so much respect. You need to give him respect and think he's going to hit that shot. Smoke it up, wait for the shot before you cross. There's no point trying to risk it trying to cross early. It's, yeah. you, you shouldn't know at this stage. They've got a full buy they're established. And at the same time, Raz missing a shot towards that Lurk player just cost them ultimately because they had no Terra to hold with anymore. You know, before they could have played back B and gone, you know what, you come in, you have to check three angles. All of a sudden, back B is clean. There's only going to be two angles. They're only going to be a site or they're going to be checkers. Easy angles for the CTs to check, especially with numbers. Now, they were trying to utilize a vent play, but not going to work out. A lot of numbers at mid and oh, APOC going to at least apply some revenge on towards FNS. Yes, yeah, so we'll get that kill at least. Sub Rosa Heal still trying to get it done. Knows there's multiple players around him. Goes for the spray. Not going to find it. Zeusy will pick that one up. It's a five on three now. Winter Fox with the early advantage here after shutting down the vent play with that Molotov. Stopping the boost meant that there could be no real mid check done by CLG up until they lost a player, really. So already two guys down. The bomb actually looking to go over towards A. Maybe a split through highway on the way. Looks like APOC is moving that way now to try and help it out. Moving up behind the shed, behind the smoke there. Trying to see if he can sneak his way in, but there's still two orbs on this site. Cutler and Cooster going to be the guys with those, but look at that position for a APOC. He actually takes that Cutler without checking behind him, so Cooster will drop him, but a two on four. Cooster here looking to go for a bit of a hero play, just moving behind this smoke bomb already down. Cooster might have just spotted the elbow there, will do it, takes down Emag with a shot to the arm. Still a three on two. T's already backing off. Off new with a perfectly timed push past the smoke. Takes out Ethan. Kusta still getting work done though. Finds three. He could actually do this. That's his fourth kill of the round even. He's on for the ace right now if he kills Raz. Raz going to be playing inside A main. Going to get faked out. Kusta, this could be huge if he finds oh. it. Will miss that shot. He's still another chance here. Trying to get it done. Raz moving around. Just taking his time. Kusta, 2 HP. Still trying to hit Raz. He has so little time. He has to do this one. Might get the shot here. Still missing. Unfortunate for Kusta. He's going to have to back out of this one now. 2 HP has to run away. So close though, a 4k, nearly an ace, he had a couple of opportunities, and, and he will dies. die to the bomb in the end. Kusta, what an attempt, but just not able to get it offline. Huge two shots to open up, just even into that one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but couldn't hit Raz. Well played by Raz, you know, just dancing around. Knew that all he had to do was just draw out the shot, and sure, it's a bit unfortunate, but the comparison was now on Kusta the Lanthos, and Winter Fox now hitting double digits. CLG has not won a round in a while, and this is a bit of an issue. Or one consecutive round, should I say. And that's seriously becoming an issue, because this just demonstrates that Winter Fox actually has such a great control of the T-side. They're just gaining that map control. CLG is paralyzed. I have not seen an aggressive play attempt at mid, neither at B. They're playing way too passive and allowing Winter Fox to gain the control. You see A Fox. Um kind of messing up there, messing up severely. <laughs> does get punished for that eventually. And Sub Rosa also putting in the pain as well. Often New Throat does get at least one trade. So now three on three. A lot messier than it should have been. APOC. Now just caking that slightly. Just just a little bit. I mean he did eventually get a kill out of everything and got taken down. And now uh, I nearly said red like Cutler. Gonna go down to Emag there on the B hole, which means the bomb getting thrown towards the site will now be planted, and you'd think that's the end of it, but Definitely good damage here out of CLG with the option to do more. They both have AK-47 here. Raz going to be entirely caught out, but hits the shot on Sub Rosa somehow. I don't know if that was a no-scope, but it was very, very quick it indeed. Was a quick scope. And now Ethan left all alone to try and do this one. Does have his AK-47, but having lost his teammate, going for it isn't really an option anymore. And Offner with the perfect read will take him down. No weapons saved for CLG. And really, we've seen both of these guys have such a dominant T-half and not much showing on the CT. Yeah, and so far CLG, I mean, they're, I think, lacking a lot more so far. Only picking up four rounds compared to Winterbox's six. And that was with an extra eco win as well. I mean, that they had three rounds after the pistol as opposed to was a two, which Winterbox had. And right now, CLG, they didn't have enough cash to buy, really invest fully into this round. So you can see a bunch of pistols. Raz actually missing the first orb shot. Ancient Grenade will do a huge chunk of damage. Raz just eats that fully for dinner. And... Right now, CLG, you know, they're trying to find opportunities with the pistol much better. You know, get some map territory, 
hold patiently and wait for Winter Fox to come and clear out these lines. But they need to do this on the buy round as well, because something needs to change. Passive's not working for them so far. Absolutely. I mean, we've seen, to their credit on both sides, this this get this very calculated play, I suppose. They're taking it very slowly. Then on the T side as well, to great effect, just taking it slowly, being patient, figuring out what's happening on the map. But they're doing a bit less of that, figuring out what's happening on the map in this side. I mean, sure, you can take it slowly, you can play passively all you like, but if you're going to go for that very passive style where you just hold your bomb sites, you've got to be 110% confident that your crossfires will work out for you because you know that what you're giving up is the ability to have any really forewarning wow. uh, spare about five seconds of where he's going to be coming. And now Zuzi's going to find the first pick. FNS will take out APOC with that CZ. So good damage done. Subroads are trying to find the 5-7 kill through the smoke. But now all four CT is going to come at this one from pretty much the same angle here. Off if he goes through the smoke. Actually just avoiding the spray of the 5-7 there. That was a bit close. But will manage to just sneak by that one unharmed. And now the CT is really just looking to do damage here. But the T's have got their post plant set now in the site and around the site. Out in B main, out in Sunroom, out in Squeaky. They're really set. And this one will... Borderline be impossible here for CLG, but Ethan's going to hit a nice shot under Ofnu. I spoke too soon. They really don't have the time to go for this one now. Bomb ticking down, but they might be able to keep these uh, Winter Fox players on the site. They might get taken out by the bomb. Kusta still trying to do just that, trying to do damage as these guys leave. Wants this bomb to go off and take them down. Doesn't care if he goes down first. He has only a pistol. He doesn't mind at all, but they will just manage to escape. That was a really nice attempt out of CLG, and I like what they were doing there. They wanted to try and get the kills, whether they got them themselves or not. But not going to do it in the end. Heavy tag by the bomb to Winterfox, but not enough to get any more kills. Booster able actually to, I think it was either Kooster or Subrosa, able to actually retrieve an AK-47, which is absolutely critical because, yes, even though they have enough money to buy, still getting that AK-47, which is so much potent defensive ability. Free gun is a free gun. If free gun's a free gun, not only that, AK-47, you know, one bullet headshot. Why wouldn't you Why wouldn't you take that as a CT, holding on towards a site? Now, the only issue that I, I guess at the moment that's coming out for CLG right now is what do they do? They've given up. They've given up mid. Okay, that's okay. You have to give up mid at this stage, but you got to make things work out. This is exactly what you want to do. Get Kooster in there with the AWP. We've seen it's effective. He gets the first pick on towards APOC, who I think had an AWP as well. I'm not exactly sure. Very unique double AWP setup if it was on Winterfox otherwise. But now they're a member up. You know they can play passive. Get the first pick, play aggressive, get some information, and then towards the latter half, get some more. Absolutely, and, and that's what we saw. Um that's what we saw so much from them on their T side as well. They were so good at finishing off first pick situations without getting too hasty about it, without pushing, without being impatient. So we'll have to see if they can now capitalize on this first pick here. I mean, in theory, if they can set their crossfires from this point forwards, they should have more guns to be able to shoot at the T's than the T's can shoot back with. I mean, that's it's just mathematically how it works when you're a five on four, and they're going to be trying to make that one work out for them. But Winner Fox here, looking like they're setting up for this A take now. Raz suddenly aware that an A push might be a possibility, but... CLG, again, showing this patience they've showed pretty consistently so far in using this first pick by, we'll give it, we'll let it give us an advantage later, rather than trying to take advantage of it now. I'm just trying to figure out where Zuzi is, because Zuzi looks like he's in A main or squeaky, so there we have it, execute on towards A site. Not 100% sure if it's a fake yet or not, but it looks like, no, it is just going to be executed straight on. Emag is out towards Fork. Zuzi does fall, trying to come into the site. Emag out, gets the trade. Emag Ooh. goes for Ethan, but can't get the spray transfer working in the favor. Offnuth, though, gets that one. Kusta looking Ooh. around, gets the second AWP kill of this round. Bomb plant going down now. One and three, Offnuth, now coming across, is surrounded by enemies from all, all sides. FNS should spot him out, but Kusta misses the shot uncharacteristically, and Offnuth will punish him for that. Now one and two, FNS slowly crawling the side, doesn't Cutler support, but he's fine at the right time. He doesn't oh. know where Cutler is though, and Cutler will be able to take that out. Bringing back another round for CLG, 14-12. Such a tight game, and this is a really surprising thing so far I've found. I mean, all the games have been so tight. You think that, you know, with coming on towards your own CT side, it'd be good. Yeah, I mean, you think so, but I mean... A good game, a tight game is a good game, really. A fast game is also a good game. But really, I mean, we're in the Pro League. Every game is a good game. All of these teams are here because they deserve to be here. They have the skill. They have the capability of winning. And that's what's so exciting to see. And Winter Fox, I mean, losing that round, that's a little bit heartbreaking because that right there was their opportunity to tie it up finally, to bring it back to 13-13. They had an opportunity to tie it up in this half, but they lost the pistol round, couldn't equalize easily with those anti egos and they've been chasing ever since. That right there was their opportunity to get it across the line, and they got so close, but now they're down again, and CLG only need one more to get onto map point. So, Winner Fox here, they're not out. They're only down by two rounds. They're only three away from securing their own map point, and therefore overtime, if not the win. But they've got to try so hard to work here, and they're not going to check under the boost there, where Cutler's going to be waiting. It's now a three on five already. 
We do have a player here in Squeaky just trying to move by. He's actually made his way. It's Emag making his way into the back there. They've done this a few times now. I have Winter Fox just moving their way into Squeaky without being spotted by the B players. But now the rest of their side has been spotted out. And Emag, he knows that Kusta has been playing in the back of the side, but not going to find the first pick. Kusta's going to find it onto Ofnu. Now, five on two. Raz, he ready for this one, but Emag's going to already do it. There's a player up in heaven. There's a player in tree. And uh, there's actually some flanks coming in too by looks. It's going to be coming in through vents, or at least considering it from mid. There's two players there. But... Still 50 seconds to play with here for Winter Fox. Emag considering going out into tree to take the fight, but not going to do it. FNS holding the angle in towards the side. Going to fall off that one for now. 40 seconds left. Bomb shortly going down. There it is for Winter Fox. But a two on four. Raz has to hit this shot in vents if he has any chance of helping his teammates stay alive here. Raz of mid-2016 will be able to hit pretty much all these. Emag, once again, another crucial role for him to play, but he's going to fall immediately. Won't be able to do enough damage. His position's now known, and he's just swarmed all over by CLG members. Raz cannot do anything between the bolting action, and CLG now on match point. A l this is so similar. Once again, a late resurgence coming in towards the half. And what's really working so far is just they're able to get the picks now, and mid was just a little bit more poorly taken by Winter Fox. It was. I mean, we've seen, as you said, pretty much mirror halves here. I mean, one team takes early advantage, it's clawed back a little bit, but then the other team winds up ahead by three, which is where we are, like, right now. I mean, admittedly, if Winter Fox want to mirror the first half, they'll win this next round and, you know, try and do what they can. But... It's just been so very close out of these guys. Just one team looking strong, the other one fighting back, and it's worth noting that Cash, normally you wouldn't think, perhaps not this T-sided, but between these two teams, they're both so much better in their T-halves. I mean, the CT is now making a resurgence, which again, we saw in last half. It was Winter Fox last time. It's CLG now. The problem for Winter Fox is, though, they were three rounds down at the start of this, so they don't really have these rounds to play with. They, they can't really let CLG make this resurgence, and now... Winter Fox need to win the next three in a row to secure themselves over time, then win four out of the six rounds after that to take this map out. And they've still got another map to play here. Long road yet for Winter Fox. Absolutely. They still need to... Look, they have to hold off this one to even just, I guess, go forward. And they don't have the money for it. They have a Tech 9, a couple of Deagles at most. You know, they have to try to make that, th that work out. And I believe it is a Winter Fox tactical pause. Because, I mean, it's 15-12. If you're down 15-12, you're going to have to make a call on what to do to try to bring it back into overtime. Yeah, I mean, very possibly. It's like they they want to have a shot to think about this and just slow it down and be like, all right, guys, if nothing else, we just need to take a second and chill. Even if we don't have any amazing strategies on the board, you can take these things as mental pauses as well. Just have a second to mentally reset and be like, okay, what can we do here? But game now on pause, going live again here. CLG versus Winner Fox. CLG on map point, which is perhaps not the result we would have expected, but only three rounds behind is Winner Fox here. The buy is not great for them, but that's not going to help either. That's one of their, I believe, bigger guns down on Emag. So they've got to try and capitalize or, I suppose, account for that loss. And it's not looking good. They are moving towards the A side here. There's three players over towards Squeaky, and they're actually out already. But Ethan could kill them all here. He does do a lot of damage, but cannot get kills off. And Winterfox can get the kills. Surprisingly, I thought that one was all going to be CLG's way. But that position there from CLG, not quite good enough. Heavy damage done. Zussi and Apoc both dinked, both below 15 HP, but no kill, which means this four on two will be ideally, and it looks like it will be won by Winner Fox here. CLG don't really have, well, they don't really need to go for this one. They've still got two map points after this one. They can afford to sit here, save these guns, not potentially put themselves in a dangerous situation later. Problem with going to the next round, CLG is not very rich. They are very poor. It's because of the damage done by Winter Fox time after time. Even though they've won, even with this open M4, what are they going to do in the next round? Do they force up? If they force up, it'll be 15-14. And then they're potentially going into the final one if they if they do lose the next one, obviously. They can only buy 5-7s. And sure, 5-7's a great gun, but you still want an M4. You want that AWP in your hand. So how are they going to mitigate this danger? Okay, so it looks like the Sub Rose actually has a bit of cash, and so will Cutler, so they should be actually able to force up into this one. Maybe a UMP, maybe a 5-7 uh, or one of the players. But it'll be interesting to see whether or not this AWP goes in the hand of anyone. It looks like they're no. actually going on a eco for the poorer players. So yeah, just they are, they're putting all their money into the next round as opposed to this one. They want to win this one, but they're not setting themselves up for a victory in this one. They're setting, up, they're setting themselves up for a victory in the final round. And what a match that would be if it goes down to the wire. Oh, I mean, it's already pretty much going to go down to the wire. I don't really see CLG winning this. I mean, Cutler has the AWP. I would have thought he maybe should have thrown that thing over to Kustar, who is, I think... I think skill-wise, the better AWP out of the two of them. But Cutler known to pick this thing up on the CT side. I mean, T side, I think he usually leaves it more over to Kusta, but he's definitely... They, they throw the AWP between them, depending on side, depending on map. And Cutler, definitely capable. I mean, he's been around this CLG team, this CLG brand for a very long time. And 
Definitely an established player, so not really a problem to see him with that, but that's going to be a problem, though. Now Kusta will have the AWP after Raz drops Cutler, but he's got to do a lot of work here with it. All of Winterfox taking this mid position. Nice quick shot there onto APOC, looking to get more done now. Is Kusta will find the second as well. Now going to be falling back. There is players so close to him. Just avoids that flashbang, but cannot get down quickly enough. Emag will drop him, which means a three-on-three. A, a very good attempt at a heroic play from Cooster, and indeed getting two is a heroic play, but maybe you'd think with the AWP as the AWP, you know, the star player effectively of this CLG lineup when he has that thing, potentially could have been looking to get more done, but Ethan could punish Emag here. Gonna take his time, hit that shot, there we go. Not gonna go for the gun. Actually, he's already got himself an M4, but now Sub Rosa left on the A site, both players are here. He's got to do this pretty much by himself, and this could, if Winterfox are caught out by this pistol close to them, it looks like Ofnil was aware of it. Checking round this smoke. This one's going to be so close. Sub Rosa, he could actually capitalize, get the punishment onto Raz. Not going to do it, and now the bomb is down, and at least for now, safe. But, oh, that's very close. Ethan did have the gun there. Now Sub Rosa, left in the one on two. We'll be throwing that smoke off to try and isolate the angle, but a nice shot out of Raz. We'll finish up that one, and all of a sudden, we're on 30th round. Winter Fox, bring it back, now playing for overtime. Yeah, and FNS does not have that much cash either. Winter Fox with all the utility in the world to work for. CLG just going for the single orb this time in Kusta. And he almost got the third kill. If it wasn't for the flashbang and Emag getting at least two kills in that round, just maybe CLG would have pulled a rabbit out of the hat. But as it is, down to the wire with when the half switched, I was expecting CLG, you know, especially up 12 6. Easy victory, you know. You think they've so. traded out eight rounds to three. Winter Fox have struggled. They have sweated it out, and they've brought it back towards the hair's breath. And they are about to take it out as well, because the trades are now working in the favor of Winter Fox. We will be possibly going towards overtime. Not seeing it potentially yet, but this beast site's going to be so hard to assault. No Molotovs for the CTs to work with. Only Smoker has a flash. And the Kusta through the wall. You can't do that towards the final round. Kusta, a man on a mission. Not FPL, Kusta. He wants to just demolish the entire Winter Fox lineup by himself. And that's the exact way to start it. Actually equalize the situation. All of a sudden, made so much more doable. Off new on the site. Raz playing very, very far back. Kusta coming through. Oh. Doesn't check through. Ethan, Ethan though, coming out through. Heaven takes him out. And Kusta gets another no shot through. Way. The smoke, edge of the smoke. Now it's all to Raz. One on three. The bomb plan is good for him, but there's so many CTs there. What a shot through the edge Deep of the flash. Already happening. Kusta will get the trade. D feels we've gone through. And CLG. Out of nowhere, we'll get the defuse, we'll get the victory, 16-14, a 3-on-4 successful retake on towards the B side. Huge plays. Uh, massive plays, as you said. I mean, that was down to the wire, which is perhaps not what we would have expected given that first half, given CLG winning the pistol round, given CLG getting up to 12-6, doubling Winner Fox's score. But in the end, we go all the way, but CLG do take it out before we get into overtime. I think with CLG, you can take the CLG out of man, but you can never take the man out of CLG. Or the other way around, because that was true. That's the only way Counter Logic Gaming would win, right? You know, go up 12 6, give false of hope towards Winter Fox, and then take him the final one. Absolutely. That is a CLG method. Classic but, CLG is it But well played by both sides. That was legitimately a charged match between two, and I cannot wait for the next one of Mirage. Absolutely. That was amazing plays out of like out of both teams, really. I mean, we definitely saw Kusa stepping up towards the end there, but Raz started to have a bit of an impact with the AWP later in that game as he started to be more comfortable. I mean, of course. Winter Fox had a rough start to that one, going down on their CT side, but they brought it back and they took it all the way so close to overtime. But in the end, I mean, Kusta really, I think he got two or three kills in that final round, just being too strong individually for Winter Fox to deal with. Just banging people through the walls, going through the edge of the smoke and just the confidence and looking at those angles to be able to get the kills. Huge stuff. So now we're just going to go for a short break because we need to all recharge after that match. But stay tuned because if that match was any indication of what's going to happen on Mirage... We could be absolutely seeing fireworks coming up. So stay tuned for the next match of the ESL Pro League Season 5 NA Division.